Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do transactions with ORM Lite. All right, welcome back everybody. In the last two episodes, I'll show you guys how to use ORM Lite, which is a library that allows you to interface with SQL databases really easily within your plugins and within Java programs. And yeah, it makes your whole life easier so you don't have to write SQL queries yourself. So in the last episode, I showed you guys a more complex topic, which is SQL relationships and how to do them with ORM Lite. But in this episode, I sh but in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to do transactions. And transactions are another important thing that you should know how to do for building applications that use SQL databases, okay? So I'll be relying on the code from last episode, so make sure that you check that episode out before you watch this one, or at least check out the code so you can see or have an understanding of what I'm doing, okay? So what I did is I made the create guild command into another, I just duplicated the file and then I renamed it to create guild old. And so I just wanna use this one to demonstrate to you why we need a transaction because uh, I think it's important to show you, you know, you know, the problems that could arise if you don't use transactions. So just as a little recap, we're using this command to be able to create a new guild based on the name that you provide to it. So first we're checking to see if they're a player, check to see if they provided a name, if they provide a name, grab the name, and then using the person who ran the command, get their UUID and find them in the database as a guild player object because we have the guild player class. And then make sure that they're not currently in a guild because if you're currently in a guild, you should not be able to create a new one. And then also make sure that the name that they provided is not already a name, okay? So once it goes through all those checks, we then create a new guild object. And then we also call the guild service.create method to create the guild inside the database. And then right after that, once we create the guild, we go ahead and call guild player .set guild. So we're setting the guild on the player and then updating the player. So now they should be a part of that guild. But what I did here is I added a exception to be thrown right before that so that it should never reach this point. So it should run everything above that. So it should check everything, check to see that the guild does not exist already. And it should also create the guild, but it will not call the logic that updates the player to make them a part of the guild. So this here would go against what we want. This would go against what you call the business rules over application. The business rules are simply the rules that you enforce for what you want to actually happen. The, for what you consider to be a valid state of your application, okay? So in this case, we want it to be so that every time someone creates a new guild, they are added to that guild when they do that. So in this case, since we are throwing an exception here, it's going to create the guild, but it's not going to add them to the guild. So this is going to be invalid logic. So something that we could do is create a transaction, which will combine all of this logic here into one unit of operation. So what that means is that even though we're doing three different things using our SQL uh, database, we can combine it into one unit so that all those tasks are combined together. And if one of them fails, the entire thing fails and rolls back. And then if everything succeeds, then the entire operation succeeds. So it's a way of ensuring that everything within the transaction, all the tasks actually execute successfully. So what do I mean by rolling back? So let's just imagine for a second that these two things are part of one transaction, meaning that we first create the guild and then we also update the player to be part of that guild. Those are two different tasks, but you can think of them as being combined together. So since they're in the same transaction, if this one fails, this means that we need to also uncreate the guild because according to our business rules, we want them to be you know, creating the guild and add it to the guild at the same time. So if running this line of code here generates a SQL exception and actually fails, it's gonna go ahead and roll back to before the transaction started so that nothing ever happens. The guild is not created and the player is not added to the guild. So both of those things will be all rolled back because it's all one thing. And this part is just something I threw in just to demonstrate that an exception could happen here. But realistically, the exception would come from this method here. So whenever we call update, inside of the update method, we have player DAO to update. Uh, theoretically speaking, this could actually fail. So whenever that fails, uh, the, the entire transaction would be a fail. So everything would roll back to before the transaction started, okay? So I think this image here is another really good example of why transactions are needed. This is whenever you transfer money from one bank account to another bank account, for example. So there's multiple steps in this process. So you have the sender account. So first you're gonna take money out of the sender account. So that's the money deduction. And then you're gonna wire the money over to the receiver account and then do the money deposit into the receiver account. If for some reason the money deduction part works and the money's taken out of the sender account and then the the money deposit part does not work and that fails if this is not one logical unit it's not part of a transaction money was just taken out of this guy's account but not added to the other account so that money is just lost into thin air and this person is now broke 
So that would be terrible, obviously. So combining this into one logical unit, as I keep saying, would make sense. So that whenever it fails on the deposit, it's going to fail the entire thing so that everything will be rolled back. The deduction will be rolled back as well, even though that was successful because it's part of one unit, so that the money never left the account in the first place, okay? Another nice diagram here, I'll leave a link for this in the description below, but it says the ATM transaction begins. The first thing it's going to do is read the balance of the account. Then it's going to update the balance of the account, so it'll take the money out. And then it's going to write the withdrawal operation to the log table, so it's going to log what happened. And then if any of these steps failed, then the entire thing fails, so it's going to roll back the data modification. And so if they all succeed, the entire thing is a success. So what it's going to do is commit the changes to the database. So all the changes that were part of this one transaction will be committed to the database, and they are permanently uh, affected into the database, so everything is complete. So now what I want to do is take our create guild command and show you guys how you can modify it to use a transaction so that it ensures that whenever you create a guild, the player will be added to the guild. And if for some reason one of those two you know, operations fails, the entire thing will fail and roll back to the point uh, as if nothing happened. So that should hopefully give you enough framework to use transactions for any type of plugin that you create on a basic level. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so here's the original command that we had before for create guild. And what we want to do is combine these two things into one transaction. And the way we're going to do it is actually by having it in the service. And I'll show you why in a second. And so we're going to go ahead and do public guild create guild from player guild player uh, player and then string name, which is going to be the name of the guild that we're creating. So to do transactions with an ORM light, you simply call upon the transaction manager from ORM light dot and then you can call call in transaction control P and the first thing it's asking for is either the table name or the connection source or the database connection so so of course if you remember correctly the connection source is something that we store within the database class but since we have these DAOs here you can access it through the DAO by doing guild DAO dot get connection source easy peasy and then the next thing you need is a callable which is a functional interface meaning that it's a interface that has a single method that you have to implement uh, so we can do new callable object and it's already giving you the uh, autocomplete here so we're just going to press tab and then now we want to put the return type of this transaction so uh, for some transactions you don't want to return anything but in this case we want to return the guild that was created right or null so we can put guild for the return type so guild and then it's going to complete that once you press enter so now we have this new callable and then within that we're implementing the call method okay easy peasy and it returns a guild because that's what we're going to be returning from it as we specified here as well so since we know that this is going to return a guild from this this is actually returning that type so we can go ahead and store that so we can do var uh, new guild is equal to that so now within here this is what this is the body of the transaction so any operations that we want to be inside of that transaction we simply put inside of here and you could also make this a lambda by the way if you know what those are so you can replace that with a lambda and now you have a much cleaner syntax but I'm just going to leave it because I, I kind of like it for some reason uh, how it is. But anyways, so now the question is, what do we put inside of our transaction? But we already know. We already created it here. So all we have to do is take this and move inside of our service. Easy peasy. So we do guild guild is equal to new guild name. And then we'll do guild is equal to create. And create is something that we have in the service already. So create and then pass in guild. And we're returning the guild that was created uh, with the ID. Um, and then after that you're going to add the player, add the player, so we can do player dot set guild, guild, the one that we just created, and then we can do player DAO dot create player, or not create, it should be update, right? So update player, because the player already exists, we're just setting the guild for the player, so we're adding the player to the guild, and then we're updating it, so this should automatically update the foreign key for the guild ID column in the player uh, table okay so now we're doing these two operations here inside the single transaction so once th once that is done if it works we should be able to return the new guild that we just created and so now that's going to be returned up to this point so this variable will have that that variable from here right so now we can just go ahead and return that by doing return new guild there we go easy peasy and put a semicolon here to complete that you could also simplify this by doing boom just return the entire thing and now it's complaining just because we're not handling any exceptions. And you can do this how you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the method signature, which really goes against everything I'm doing everywhere else. But I think it's kind of clean what I'm about to do. So I'll just show you that in a second. But we're adding it to the signature here so that if an exception occurs, it's going to be passed upwards to wherever this is called. And that will handle it there. 
And so yeah, what we're doing here, just as a recap, is we're starting a new transaction, and then we're passing in the connection source, so that's the connection to the database. And then after that, we are simply making uh, a call to create a new guild, and then we're adding the player to the guild, which is a separate SQL operation, but they are now being combined into one logical unit. So that if this one fails, everything is rolled back, so the guild is never created. But if everything succeeds, it's all going to be committed to the database, and everything is going to be permanent at that point. All right, pretty simple. And so now what we can do is go ahead and call this method within the create guild uh, class here. So we can get rid of this and do guild service dot create guild from player player or actually guild player and then guild or actually the guild name rather sorry so name there we go and then we can handle the exception so we could say if an exception happens we can say something like player dot send message uh, the guild failed uh, to be created try again later and then we could take this the success message and move it after this uh, successfully runs okay um, so this will give you the new guild so we can say var new guild is equal to that and now we could do new guild new guild dot get name or we could just simply pass a name that makes more sense I would say so name there we go so now we are doing the same exact thing as before except we've wrapped two of those operations that we previously had within the command into one transaction so that they are one unit so now let's go ahead and jump on the server just to make sure this works and uh, there's no errors or anything like that. All right, looks like everything is working. So let's go ahead and jump on the server now. So we can do slash create guild. Uh, we'll say testy cool. It says you are not in the DB for some reason. I think I just need to rejoin. Let's try again. So create guild test testy cool. It says guild created, you are now the owner of testicle, awesome. And let's just look in the console now, we have no errors, perfect. So we can assume that it worked. Um, we can check the database though if we want to be sure, just real quick. Open this up, go ahead and do open database.db. And let's go ahead and look inside of guilds, query that. Looks like we have our testy cool guild, which is awesome. And then in the players table, we can see that we have our player and it has a foreign key ID of one for our testy cool guild. So everything is linked together perfectly. So everything worked, that's pretty awesome. So now one thing I wanna add though, is if we go back to our create guild command, we still have this find by name uh, thing being called from our service here, right? Which is executing another operation on our DB to look for something with that name. Um, what we could do is add this into our transaction because what could technically happen, although this is a really, really rare circumstances, um, between them checking to see if there's a guild with this name and actually doing the transaction itself, there could be a guild created with that name. Okay, so in between those two points in time, there could be a guild created with that name so that it violates the principle of having two guilds with the same name. Now, technically, we already have on the guild class the unique uh, property on the name uh, column, but I think it's important to enforce that with your code as well, okay? To avoid exceptions in the first place, because even though you have the unique property on there, if it violates that, it's gonna throw an SQL exception, and you really don't want an exception in the first place. So what we could do is just take this piece of code here and put it into the transaction, and what that will do is, since it's combined into one unit of logic, um, they will all technically be ran uh, at the same time, meaning that that little edge case cannot happen because it's part of the transaction. So making that change is actually really easy. So we can go ahead and just remove this now, just remove that, and then we'll go into the guild service. And within the guild service, we can add some stuff in here. We could say if find by name, pass a name is not equal to null, return null. There we go. So what this will do is simply return null out of the transaction if there's already a guild with that name. And so the transaction will return that value, which is null, back into the create guild command. And then in the create guild command, we can handle that. So we just have to make a slight modification to this to account for that. And here we go. So we're calling the same service, calling the same method. We're storing the result of that, which is the guild, because we need to check the variable to see if it's null or not. If it is null, we can assume that for some reason there's already a guild with that name. So we can just tell them uh, a guild with that name already exists or an error occurred. And then otherwise, we can say guild created. You are now the owner of, you know, testy cool. So everything worked at that point. So hopefully that makes sense. We're just simply combining that into the transaction so that weird little edge case can't happen where uh, checking to see if the name is already, you know, a guild and running the transaction itself. Uh, since there are two different operations uh, in between, a guild could be created with that name. We're 
making sure that that can never happen, okay? All right, guys, so that's all I got for you for this episode. Hopefully, you found this one interesting. I thought it was pretty cool. So now you guys should know what transactions are in SQL and how specifically to implement them and rather use them using ORM Lite. And with that, you can make your plugins a little more uh, less error prone and, and prone to less edge cases, as you saw. But yeah, if you guys want to see anything else, then let me know. I'll be glad to show you some more database stuff if there's something that you guys want to see that I missed. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.